Hallelujah. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Somebody say, Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. I'm just looking for a lady to call. So I just look for someone that I'm familiar with. That uh, I know some names. I can call. Who can I call? What, what, do I, what do I know very well? I know your name and son name. Why are you not looking down? Like <laughs> Let me see. I've called all the people I know in the first and second service. So. What if I know always sit at the back in that married man and my there's a corner where they sit? Oh, oh, Sister Stacy, you are here. I didn't even realize you were here. Yeah. 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 One of our pastoral leaders. She's also single. I know she doesn't like me to say that, but she's really nice and single. And if you want to get a really great wife, this is one right beside me. You know. Camera, don't show us together. Show her alone. Why are you showing us together? Go this way for the camera. She manages a branch for Sterling Bank. She's one of the, you know, Heritage Bank. She's one of the managers in. Heritage Bank and, uh, you know, so, yeah. So, Stacy, yeah. So, her name is Stacy. Just imagine that kind of very nice name, you know. <laughs> you know, it's never looking like Stacy, baby Stacy. Like, that's nice. All right. You know, why are you looking so comfortable? All right. So, watch this now. I wanted to watch something. Hey, Stacy, how are you? What did they call you in the, band, in the branch? Did they call you like a title? What do they call it? SM something something? Don't they call it? Okay. SM. They, they, they call it full name or they call it SM? SM. SM. Okay. Good. So just respond as you normally respond. Watch it. So don't think it's me. Just respond to whatever I call you. Hey, Stacy, how are you? I'm very fine. Thank you, sir. Okay. Sister Stacy, how are you? I'm very good. Thank you, sir. Okay. <laughs> SM, how are you? I'm good. Wow. Are, are you getting it? Yeah. Watch this. Baby, how are you? I'm fine, darling. I, I wanted to see something. Is she, is she the same person in all of those scenarios? Is she the same person? Literally, she's the same person, but her expressions are different. But all the scenarios have their identity. When I say Stacy, I spoke to her as a friend. I spoke to her as a colleague, and she responded back to me. When I say Sister Stacy, then the pastor in me called her out, and she said, "Oh yes, sir," because she's reporting to her pastor. When I say SM, which is a, a designation in the office, she said, "Oh yes, how can I help you?" Then when I say baby, then that took another dimension by itself. She said, you know, and she, you know, and she, she couldn't help it, and she began to Google <laughs> and went that way. What am I trying to show you? I'm trying to show you something here. Is it not amazing how God calls the same calls us different things? And you read in the Bible somewhere, and God will say, "You are the light of the world." And, and you know, you read somewhere, it says, "You are the salt of the earth." Then you read somewhere, it says. You are, the, you are a holy nation. Then he says, you are priests unto God. The question is this, why does God call us? The reason why God calls us all those names is for significant things. Number one, because each of the things he, he calls us, he appeals to an identity he's trying to bring out of us. As a matter of fact, when you're married, what you call your husband from time to time depends on what you want to achieve. My people know that, right? <laughs> My people know that, right? When you want your child to take it, you know, see, 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 what, 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 
people are, if, you know what I'm talking about. What, if you're married, you'll be surprised because, you know, when you want him to help you do something, then you have a name, my Hokogan. <laughs> when you're my Hokogan, that means you come and carry something. <laughs> but when you hear, Olowarimi, what does it mean? Come and pay for something. So, so the names, you know, all of you are married are laughing now because you, this, this really identifies to you. So the names, so, 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 so when you hear our daddy, the school fees decision is going to be made. Something serious has happened. So the reason I'm saying so is this. The same way human beings are, we're linked from God. So when God looks at you and God says you're the light of the world, it's because he wants you to see another side of yourself. He's appealing to another side of you. When God calls you, in fact, he calls us sons. It's who we are. He calls us salt of the earth. He calls us priests. As a priest, he tells you, you are offering sacrifices. Because each identity that, each name that God calls us is an identity within us. And why does he call us that? Each identity reveals a part of God. Each identity has its own values. Thank you, ma'am. Each identity has its own values. Each identity expands us. For example, you know, so, so when you when say, Daddy, why? You know, that puts you, that expands you at the moment. Because normally should have said, Sweetheart. She would have said, Baby. Now she has said, Daddy. Daddy means supplier source head of our home we have come to you when god calls you something he's trying to expand your identity that's what i'm going to god is calling for something in the inside of you you're gonna really catch this now this is powerful second timothy chapter 2 verse 1 And that's why in the Bible, you'll notice something. Can I, can I show this in quickly? I never said in the other service, just for third service. Do you notice this? Every time Satan tempts people, what he attempts, what he tempts them with is identity. He comes to Eve and says, if you eat this, you will be this. What was he saying? You're not what you are. Eat this and become this. It was a test of identity. He comes to Jesus Christ. He says, if you are the son of God, it was a test of identity. Because how did it, Satan, Satan destroyed Eve? Because he expanded the identity into sin. He was trying to do the same thing with Jesus Christ, but he didn't succeed. The problem is this. Are you calling yourself what God calls you? Oh my God. Are you calling yourself? See, all of a sudden, you, you've called yourself barren. Smart Christians don't even use the word that. They, see, smart Christians, eh? they don't even call themselves that. That they don't use the word in their mouth. But when they're having an internal dialogue with themselves, that's what they use for themselves. Smart Christians will say, I'm a failure. But when they talk to themselves, they say, you're failed. You're a failure. And that is a primary language they use for themselves. Have you called yourself an addict? You say, no, I'm an addict. Addict of what? What does God say about you? For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free. He didn't say you're an addict. He said you've been set free. The, so, you're not a sex addict. You're not a pornography addict. You're not a cryptomania. That's what we are. The reason why is this. The moment you accept you're an addict, what happens? If I said baby, she responds to the baby vibe. Once I say I'm an addict, then I respond to what? The habit, the addict vibe. When God wants to change a man, one of the things he changes, he changes his identity. So he calls Abraham, 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 Abraham. Glory to God. But 
I mean, that, that's just by the way. That's just, you know, that, 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 that's just by the way. The reason why identity is powerful is that you will always act in line with your identity. I don't know if you know that. Have you ever seen a lady that walks anyhow and she, oh, sorry, I'm a lady. I should not be walking like that. What she's saying, my current walking is not in line with what? With my identity. So, every one of us will find ourselves behaving in such a way and having standards that align with our identity. So, when someone says, why are you talking to me that way? The reason why is that they may, just, they may not be insulting you, but the conversation they're having with you is beneath the identity you have for yourself. So, when God begins to call, God wants to change your cause and identity out of you. The major problem we have with a spiritual life is that you don't have the right identity. And I'm going to show you in a moment. Second Timothy chapter, chapter 2 verse 1. This is Paul speaking to Timothy. And it begins with something very powerful. It says, therefore my son, he says, this is very confusing. It says, therefore what? Come on, you have to speak louder than that. Therefore what? Did you notice something? Even the way you speak is based on your identity. So I can't speak louder. It's not true. You can speak louder. It's only that you've told yourself that the tone you maintain is your normal tone for your person. And some of you speak very loud. You say, I have a loud voice. It's not true. You've just told yourself that loud, loud voice is your what? Identity. So when I say read in church now, you read based on the identity inside of you. But that's not what I'm going to. So he says, he says, he says, Therefore, my son, that, see that verse blew me apart. He didn't say, Therefore, my co minister, he didn't say, Therefore, my it says, It says, You know what, Paul, you must know the scriptures are inspired, so there's no mistake in the Bible. He said, Therefore, my son, Paul, the Holy Ghost through Paul, wanted us to do something that the church is organized as a family. He said, Therefore, my son, he could have said, Therefore, my co minister, he could have said, Therefore, my assistant pastor. He could have said, therefore, provision. But he said, in church, it's a spiritual family. He said, therefore, my son, this is the reason why people never get in love from churches. The reason why he says, they don't see themselves as a part of a spiritual family. When they come to church, they want to be distant. You're like, you know, I, I don't want to know anybody in church, you know, church people. What are my church people? I want to ask you, do you belong to a family? Is everybody in your family perfect? Answer. If I have a part family, raise up your hand. Let's recognize you. That all your uncles are perfect, all your aunties are perfect, all your brothers, all your sisters are perfect. Raise up your hand. There's no family that's perfect. So the same thing with church. There's no body, there's no church that is perfect. The reason why I'm saying so is that when you come to a church, you must realize that you've come into a family. You must have it in your mind. And that's why you can say I have two churches. No, you can't have two families. You can't. As a matter of fact, when you have two churches, you will end up confusing yourself. The reason why is that every family has a DNA. And let me tell you something. The word that God wants to give you is true one person, not true two people. That's why Revelation says, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus. He didn't say, that means if you were not, that angel does not mean an angel, it means the minister, the chief servant, the pastor. It says, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus. Sometimes Christians get very funny and they be like, you know, sometimes I don't go to church, I just watch CBN. I said, you don't understand. In Christ, you can have other teachers, but you only have one father. You know the difference? Teachers can teach, but only fathers give inheritance. Teachers can teach. Only fathers give what? Inheritance. Legacies comes from fathers. And the reason I'm saying so is that we need to have the right attitude when it comes to church. We must not church as a family. One church is full of messed up people and not messed up people. It's all together. But for you to be really impacted in church, it must have a community. Don't attend the church that nobody knows you. That's not a family. He says, my son, Timothy. In church, we have uncles, we have aunties, we have fathers, we have sons, we have daughters. We are all in different relationship with each other. The reason I'm saying so is that when you come to church, you must remember, I've come into family. 
just be there. So in church, it must be easy that, oh my God, do you know this person? No, I don't. Will you introduce me? He must have that kind of attitude. Don't bring the lekkies, like psychedelic kind of kind of lifestyle. Like we don't know our neighbor. That is lekkie. That's not church. The kingdom of God and the culture of the kingdom of God is superior to the culture of lekkie. Oh, I just want me and my wife. I just want me and my wife to be. Now, the day you want to divorce is the way you look for a pastor. Most people look for cancer when it's too late. It's like sickness. People eventually go to the hospital, but it's too late. How will I know Ben was going for a show? Because there's a conversation from his team leader to me, and we're able to support him. How many of you are looking for business here, and what you're praying for is someone next to you, but nobody knows? You must think of church as a family. When you join a church, joining a church is not Sunday attendance. Mm-mm. Even Satan's come on Sunday. I'm telling you, if I stay outside, sometimes I just say, wow. Because I, I can see through the spirit that this person is demon possessed. I mean, I want to take a picture and say, that's good. Just guys took this picture with demons too. So I just take a picture. Praise God. So church is a family. You must remember that. That church is a family. So the fact that I attend on Sunday doesn't make me a member. No. What makes you a member is that I'm vitally connected. I'm I'm in a relationship. I'm in a relationship. I belong to a small group. I belong to this. I know who my pastor is. There should be someone in church I can call my own son or my uncle or my father. That's what church is. Uh, And you know why that is important? Because Watch, I'm, you're going to clap in a minute. You're going to clap when I say this. Because discipleship is by followership. Yeah. Discipleship is by what? Followership. How did Peter, James, and John become spiritual? They followed Jesus. How did Elijah become follower? He followed Elijah. Nobody just says, I just arose. I'm a spiritual. The person that tried it, he got it wrong. His name was Apollos. He took Aquila and Priscilla to take him inside and to train him. Because the way spiritual things are, sometimes you have to see to understand what they are saying. You know, one time one of our pastors says, you say, I see somebody. say, how do you see it? You need someone to explain. It does like it. You say, I see it. say, how do you see those things? You have to explain the spiritual concept. And the reason I'm saying so that a lot of you, from the depth of your heart, you really want to grow. But the point is that you want to grow, but you want to go your own way. Mm-hmm. There's only one way to lose, lose weight. Diet and exercise. None. If you can't diet and exercise, weight loss is not yours. Same thing in Christianity. If you're going to be a disciple, there must be someone you're following and that's discipling you. And you, Listen to me. Do you know the problem with Peter? The Bible says, as Peter began to follow afar off, he backslided. The closer, because proximity is impact. Proximity is power. The closer you are to the relationship that's spiritual, the more spiritual you become. And I'm saying it because a lot of you sincerely want to grow spiritually, but you can't figure it out. And I'm giving you the big key. The big key is this, relationships. You must be, find a cell, find somebody within the spiritual community that can mentor you. And you talk to them regularly, and you find a way to build them. Like, okay, if I'm talking to you personally, I'm in a system that produces that for me. Glory to God. I said, Glory to God. So, the first thing we saw here, we, we see here, rather, is that it says, My son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. The verse 2. Verse 2 says, And what this was it? This is very powerful. Are you here? Let's read this together. I want to go. Will you read out loud, please? Will you read out loud, please? Okay, let's go. I want to go. And the things you've heard of me. Continue. This is powerful. It says the way the relationship works is that the thing you've learned from me, from the leaders, you keep passing it down. That's how a family works. And that's what I want to ask all of you. Let me ask all of you. All of you that are doing so well in business, doing 5 million per month, 10 million per month, 15 million per month. How can you be in this church and there are people that are doing business of 200,000 per month and you can't mentor them. What is the use of your success? What is the use of your success that you've been married for 10 years and have a great marriage and yet you can't teach all of us that are struggling about marriage? What is the use of your success that you're a grandparent, you're a grandfather, 
You have kids that have gone out of school and you've trained them well. And yet you can pick some of us that have kids that are three years old, five years old and pass on the lesson. What makes you have a legacy is not what you have achieved. It's a lesson you pass down. And that's what God is calling you. It is the things you've learned of me. And someone says, you know what? I'm still building my career. Don't you realize that where you are is someone else's testimony? Some of you young ladies, you're married today, but you knew what it was to be single. How you went through fire. You went through 10 boyfriends. Why can't you sit down and mentor young girls and say, these were the mistakes I made. But you've so soon forgotten. Meanwhile, God wants to turn your pain into ministry. Are you here? Yes, Are you here? Yes, Many of you used to stay in Alimosho. You could do it better. You've forgotten them. Oh, I'm out. What, what do you say? On the island. <laughs> You're so quick to say it. But have you asked yourself, why was I born there? Why was I raised there? Why was I raised in Awuchi? Why was I raised in, in the deep side, inside, inside of Benin? Somewhere inside, not the junction, no, inside, not GRE, inside. Huh? Ibi Yoko? Uh -huh. You're inside. And God is hoping that if He can find someone, He can find others. Are you here? Someone said the Lord is talking. Say the Lord is talking to me. Let's keep, let's keep going now. Verse 3. Then, so, so the first identity. So, like I explained with my sister Stacy. So one, one, one way is sister Stacy, another one is Stacy, another one is SM, then another one is baby. So he calls us. So, so the point is this there's a problem. When you come to church, you see church as a place you attend, you don't see as a family you join. And so says, the reason why I don't want to be hurt, but question in your family, don't it hurt you? But you just say, these are my brothers, these are my sisters, they are human. You create an excuse for them. So when church people do church things, create an excuse for them. So don't be afraid. What have church people not done to me? Everything. But he now gives us another identity. He said, you're not just a son. He said, the next thing is this. He says, then he gives us another layer of identity. He called us one time a son and will respond by family values. But he now calls us the next thing. And, and, and listen to me. Someone says, how do I prepare the family? The first thing you have to do, two things you have to do. Part of the family, the ultimate place you have to be is to be in a group. Either a married men's group, either a singles group, either some kind of group you have to be in the group. How do I start? Go track. Go track takes place after every third service in the teens' church. That's how they will tell you where you can start. It takes place today after the third service. And that's where you should go to today after the third service. You will not die. Go today after the service. The reason why is that when you postpone, you've been postponing for one year now. And up to all, I've gotten cell location. This evening, go to cell. Yeah. This evening, go. See what it says. It says this. It says, therefore, do what? Endure what? So, in one vein, it says we are sons. Then another vein, it calls us what? Soldiers. You, you know why I call us soldiers? Let me show you why I call it. Look at it like that. It says, therefore, endure hardness. But he understood that when we say hardness, you wonder that, no, now, I didn't stand up for hardness. I'm a son. Which one is hardness again? So, it needs to remind you that you're not just a son. You are also what? A soldier. How does it work? This is how it works. Once you come into the family of God, parabashanda, you come into a family as a son and a daughter. You graduate into an army. Let me talk to those that are here. Those that are here. here. <laughs> I, 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 I know the army is here. Those people are sound like family members. <laughs> Once you come into the kingdom, you come into a family. Then you graduate into an army. <laughs> you, you know, family people are still watching on Instagram. What's going to happen? Army people understand others. Army, army understand others. The problem is this. When you come into the kingdom of God, you know, like, um, God is my provider. God is this. Church is nice. How church? It was fun. It was awesome. Those are the family side. You now graduate to army. In army, you take command. It's not what you feel. Attention. That's it. So, this thing that they, why didn't you fast? You know, I'm not used to fasting, family side. 
you are still talking like so. But you have to go. I want to ask you. I want to ask you. How many of you swept when you were young? Come on. Don't lie. You wash plates. Why? But when you were born, were you washing plates? No. As you grew, to show you are growing, they gave you responsibility. Responsibility is a sign of growth. If you don't have responsibility in God's family, then you are not growing. Glory to God. He says, as a soul, he says, endure hardness as a soldier. He says, it's going to get tough. But you're a soldier. You are a soldier. Soldier. Let me tap your name and say, officer, how are you doing? Listen to me. This is not just a church. This is a military formation. This is a military formation. When you came into church, you know, someone say, why did you come? I couldn't get my makeup done. Get your makeup done. As a soldier, does army care about makeup? Sunday morning, you said, um, I just feel tired. Tired? Does army care about tiredness? Is it not obey before you complain? The reason why you feel those things are challenging is that you've not seen yourself as a soldier. You've seen yourself as just a sheep, as a son. You know, just pamper me. Just, you know, daddy way they pamper. Daddy way they... they, they, You know, daddy way they pamper. The same daddy that pampers is the Lord of Hermes. And we are enlisted. So, there's a pampering dimension, but there's a general dimension. Where it calls out to his armies and said, Let my armies arise, then we arise like the Vikings. Ha <laughs> ha. Do you know the Vikings? Make the son of a warrior. Whoa! That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Uh, have you watched this movie Vikings before? When you watch the Vikings, all they do is they fight for a living. That's what we do. Listen to me. Satan doesn't need you to fight him, he'll fight you. Because the Bible says the devil goes like what? A roaring lion looking for whom he will devour. You were born into this army. You were born into it. You need to begin to think that I'm a soldier. Someone says, well, I went out late on Saturday. I come to church. Those are not soldier talk. You went out late on Saturday. I forgot you were fasting. I've already didn't even break fast. You know, what was that? I was so tired. I said, I watch church online. And you, 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 I can't come this Sunday. Soldiers don't talk like it's, it's okay before I come. So, officer Truma, stand on your feet. Attention. Watch my officer. Attention. He doesn't need to feel like chest out. He doesn't need to feel like. Officer Truman, give me 10 press ups. What's Praise God. It's not, see, I, the general, it's not about his feelings, it's about the mission. It's about the command. It's about the target. It's about the goal. And that's what most people do not realize. You belong to an army. He says, watch this now. Verse 3. Go back again. He says, as a good soldier, endure hard. That means sometimes it will be difficult. Your friend says, let's do this. No, I can't. I, I can't. I, I can't. I'm sorry, I can't. And they'll be like, ah, you mean that you're so religious? He said, I'm sorry, I can't. I, I can't. I can't. And they will talk bad about you and talk about you. I'm sorry, I can't. We're, we're not trying to blend in. We don't have inferiority complex issues. Someone says, I, 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 I don't do sex before marriage. I ah, know it depends. Sha. I'm not so because, because now 
Because how can you tell them you're a virgin? So when they talk about the sex, they say, no, are you a virgin? No! <laughs> I've done three some before, sir. I've done ten some. Because sin looks tush. Tush. Is that now you'll be liking girls that cannot afford trip to Dubai? You'll be liking their picture. Instead of you to ask that, just comment, question mark, bam. I cannot like your picture. I know, I know your parents, they don't have money. I know you don't have a job. You took you first class to Dubai. Where do you find the money? Instead of you to put question mark, you'll not be saying that, oh God, why? I need an angel to touch your tongue. I need an angel to touch your tongue. What is why? Z. Praise God. It's time to go deep. We are an army. See, let me tell you something. The problem is that many of you have wrong mentors. You have wrong models. So the thing will be pulling you as Christ is pulling you. Values are also pulling you. To do what? One time when I was younger, all of my friends were telling about all these finances, big money. You're calling big money. I just said, I just stood up. They said, oh, are you not interested? I said, you know me, pastor. There's no way I can find it. So, no, what, what you don't like, what, if you want to get burnt, you don't play with what? Fire. When you're going, oh, big money, big money. I, I said, how will I find it? Will I steal the church money? You must remember you're a soldier. When, when it's time for prayer, don't be like, uh, it's time for prayer. I don't feel like feelings. Soldiers don't know feelings. You stand at attention. 6.30 a.m. is a morning drill. Once I give the command online, pa! What do you do? Man, talk about a shot about ya. Anywhere you are, you get up! I say, eh, today is Monday. I'm just feeling something. We, we, we don't care about feelings. We walk by faith, not by sight. Have you not seen men? I'm looking for a prayerful wife. Because the man cannot pray. He's looking for a prayerful wife. What a spiritual disorder. Are you not the one that should be leading the family in prayer? Inspiring your wife and children on prayer. You are not the one looking for prayerful wife. To supplement your prayerlessness. So when it comes to prayer, you just see the man just do. Because the woman is the spiritual head of the house. The man is the assistant. Glory to God. Is it not this generation of people who say that, hey, I couldn't come to church, I was just resting. Resting. Do you call them at work that you are resting, you can't come to work? And yet you go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. They don't bomb monkey banana that should not go to work. Yet, you've been in this church one Wednesday midday service, you have never come before. Yes, it's you. It's you. The Holy Ghost is flogging you. Receive the king. Praise God. I will join cell. I will join cell. I will join prayer department. I will join. I will join. Three years, you are still going to join. The reason why is that your feelings, what you feel will not allow you. Because you've forgotten you're a soldier. Soldiers that care about feelings that at all. You know, when they shoot someone, shoot him dead. If they just see that he's dead, they don't leave, they leave him first. You know, if he's alive, they try to save him. He sees that they, they save those that are there. Look at the next line. Oh my God. Someone say, endure hardship. So someone say, you know, you know, some of you, you know, our offering. I said, why even lucky that God said, give 10%? If you say, give more than that, what will you do? Did you read that of the apostles? They didn't give 10% to it. The Bible said, they will carry all they have and sell. You didn't read the woman that did alabaster box. It was one year wage. How will she live next year? I don't know. Lord, I thank you that you only ask for 10%. Too. Are you? See what it says. It's began to talk about the soldier. It says, no man that wore it entangled himself. Can I be honest with you? There are some people you must unfollow today on Instagram. Because they disturb your mind. They bring vibrations from the pit of hell. He said, no man that wore it entangled himself with their fears of this life. There's a way, there's a way they there's a way they talk, there's a way 
to show things. It affects you. You find it pulling you away. Why? That it may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. Soldier, make the son of a warrior. Wait, wait, wait. All my soldiers, attention! Make the son of a warrior! That's it! Make the son of a warrior! Say, I am a soldier! Say, I am a warrior! For the kingdom of God! All your Instagram account, Facebook account, you see food, see Japan, see Tokyo. All you don't see is Jesus. Who are you worrying for? Share the link. That's all you don't hear. But it's funny mimics, Mimi, that you'll be sharing. What do you call it? Mimi. Memes. Sorry about that. Give a shame. Memes. You will see, you will see all these men, they will come to church. They will behave as if they can't dance. When you see them in Quinox, the child that is half their age, you see. Oh. Meanwhile, your creator, your creator that created you without charge. Amana Yamakoba Shataba Leba Kaba Yaya. Say I'm a soldier. In this church, you will learn to pray. Oh. All these catch are when they start coming down, they start coming down, they start coming down. All these catch, they start coming down. Because some scared cannot work for soldier work. Oh. You just say that. Hey, pa. <laughs> Say, I'm a soldier for Christ. Make the son of a warrior. How can you come to harvesters? One week you have not read your Bible. You have not read harvesters. Go to another church. Uh, this place will love Bible. We love prayer. We love Bible. Uh, you, one whole week you have not even read the Bible. As you kept it on Sunday, you'll pick it on Sunday again. In our family, we know ourselves. So I say, it's boring. That's why you're a soldier. Jews are boring. But you do it. Praise God. The, the, kind, the kind of lie you lie. Eh? Hi. When will you have grow lying? When will you have grow lying? They met you as a married man. You say you are single. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Stand on your feet, let's pray. Make the son of a warrior! Say, this is what I do. I'm a soldier for Christ. A warrior in God's kingdom. I will not rest unto the kingdom of this world. Become the kingdom of my God. I will. I, will. I, can. I can. I must. Let the shout of folks victory. Oh. Media, show me that picture. Oh, this one. Uh, I, I come to church only first Sunday. Die. Show me that picture. And then to ask yourself is my spiritual family a cruise ship? Or a battleship. Titanic. Your department, your unit, yourself. Is it a cruise ship? We need Samosa to make you come. Or is it a battleship? Army ready for the Lord. Lift up your voice and say, Lord, I'm ready. Oh, go ahead and pray, everybody. Go ahead and pray. <laughs>